All right, welcome back. We are focusing on the next topic for the day, and it is on the Electoral Act Amendment, and the President seems to have some reservation. Now, President Mohamed Buhari has officially conveyed his reservation about the Electoral Act 2022 to the National Assembly, asking the federal parliament to delete Section 84, Subsection 14 of the new Electoral Law. Buhari, while assenting to the Electoral Act 2010 Amendment Bill, at the President Villa in Abuja on Friday, had highlighted sections of the new law that would revolutionize the electoral system in the country, but express reservations about Section 84, Subsection 12. Now, we have former member of the House of Representatives, Kendi Odeneye, joining us this time around to look at the President's um, reservation. Good morning to you, Honorable Odeneye. Thanks for joining us on the show. Uh, we are doing well, thanks, uh, yet again. So let's talk about this um, Section 84, subsection 12, you know, uh, the president says it constitutes a uh, disenfranchisement of seven political office holders from voting or being voted for at conventions or congresses of any political party for the purpose of nomination of candidates for any election in cases where it holds earlier than 30 days to the election. But the question right now would be, the president had assented to uh, this uh, particular law, so how come this was not really seen before now. I don't really get it. I just need some clarification, really. Yeah. Um, what the president was to find, he wants to delay further on the finding of the uh, electoral act because of timing. You should recollect that um, the, the delay in the signing of the uh, uh, electoral act was going to affect the timetable to be released by IMEC then. And uh, also, applications from Nigeria have to be found that they uh, wanted the president to sign the program. Again, uh, the president did not want to support um, the election back to the national assembly about uh, six times before the final time. So that was why. He, to time. And after recognizing that he had service, he quickly wrote that to the National Assembly that um, he just had to look at a particular person that he supports the control of that act. So um, what he had done was not out of place. I said that he didn't want to return to this then because of the pressure, because of the timing, and because of every other thing around uh, that electoral bill. That was why in the past, I now made the reservation. However, that reservation that we have sent that uh, the students will not, will not pass. Ordinarily, what I would have expected was to do an executive bill. He was supposed to do an executive rather than letting, rather than writing a letter to the National Assembly to, to redraft or to correct or expunge that particular thing. What I expected the president to have done is to do an executive, most clearly, session and draft the cow, to no, um, redraft what. Expect to be there or ask that that particular person totally respond. So it won't fly by. So in support of an executive And looking for that particular question, you realize that what the president said is that he does not want to look at that person very much. Um, that provision does not establish the provision of the general of federal policy. That is exactly what uh, uh, trying to do. But as I said, we are sending the executive bill, taking exactly what we expect to find that particular section. And this will not, uh, whatever correction we see in non-executive file, or that we are talking about. 
All right, um, Honorable, uh, let's really get um, a sense of understanding concerning that particular section, 84 subsection 12. Um, what's really the significance about that particular section? Yes. The, 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 the significance of that section is the fact that some political appointees will not be able to stand for election and they cannot also add any element of the party as a congress or convention of the party. So that is what I think. However, what the process of the system of the court is that if you are a court office holder, you need to resign your appointment before that by what are the days for the election? So the problem here is that which election are we talking about? Which election are we talking about? The constitution is specifically talking about the general election and not self-party election. That is my own interpretation. He's talking about the general election and not the Congress in terms of the political party. And another thing is that if I read the eyes of the legislation section, what the observers are trying to do is to ensure that the 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 doctors and even people president can use political office holders to increase their own uh, vote as convention and congresses, which the which National Assembly members feel is not correct enough. However, if for a final conclusion can be drawn from this, the two provisions sit side by side and public opinion support and legal opinion support. If not done now, I have I have a situation where there will be spirit of court um of court um uh implications on further on on the coming election. So this has to be particular provisions has to start out now once and for all. If there is any need to a lot of people my eyes on that and take party, political parties and IPEX to court by the time the citizen election is held. So we have to be careful. There must be a clear decision on this particular thing. All right, but um, so I, I'd like to, you know, look at this from this angle. Uh, we already know that, I mean, if the president is asking that uh, that part should be deleted so that you have political appointees uh, having the right to be part of the elect uh, electoral process and voting, um, what happens to the issue of loyalty and neutrality? Because you also want to agree with me that even in the, I mean, the fact that you have a civil servant or public servant, uh, when that particular service was introduced in 1954, uh, some of the cause were that uh, the people should actually be serving the interests of the public. Should we not be looking at how... I'm not getting the question. So I'm saying, shouldn't we be tilting towards ensuring that these persons are not within the control of the governors and the president? Because uh, it would always be that whoever, you know, appoints this person, I mean, whoever plays the tune or dictates the tune, uh, this person will always tilt towards what they want. And so shouldn't we, because constantly we have um, these appointees tilting towards those who appointed them, they would have to dance to their tune, whatever happens. We have seen defections in some states. We have seen states that are, you know, particularly a particular state and all of a sudden you have a governor defecting and all of the appointees are defecting. So what happens when we actually get to that point where I we're giving them a lot of access? Shouldn't we be tilting election. towards the public savings? I mean, the civil service <laughs> pattern where we're looking at loyalty, neutrality, uh, you know, for the interests of the Nigerian people. Yeah, let, let me put the right one. If the legislature and even the executive really want to be on the 
prayers for Nigeria is very good and I think what the expectation should do is to go to constitution respect and not just limit the staff to the electoral act. Let them go to the constitution and ensure that everybody has opportunity but not to accept of being influenced by everybody. That has to be made. They should go to the constitution make everybody able to participate but not to accept or also give anybody right, the opportunity of those that are given up for the size they are right. Very, very important. So rather than just a make necessary act, the legislator should go to the Because for us to have a very electoral process, there should not be any interest by anybody, but at the same time, every Nigerian must have the right to exercise own electoral uh, right or power. So, so therefore, it means that uh, if that should be the case, then the, the law and the review of the Constitution should be withdrawing the powers from the governors and the president from appointing, uh, you know, members into their cabinet. Yes, um, let, me, let me put it. The president or the governor have the right to appoint any into their cabinet. And those appointed have the right to also exercise some right. So what we can also do is to look at other advanced delivery and look at how they and see a way of employing stock or importing stock into our own electoral but adapting able to our purpose. That's what, that's, that's what I'm saying. Right. So, what I'm saying, as, as I said earlier, is that the legislators have to go They have, they have assured the president that they put people in place, people in commission, but they have to look at that in the general interest of the system and not specifically. All right, um, Honorable um, Odene, let's just look at, uh, you had said before now, uh, when you were talking about what the president would have done was to have sent an um, um, executive bill uh, to this um, uh, National Assembly as against them, um, writing them to amend or expunge or delete a particular session. But as it is right now, we know all that really happened before the uh, assenting of um, this particular act, uh, all the delays um, that happened, you know, the back and forth and all of that, eventually the president signed it. So with this right now, what do you see playing out? Uh, do you see um, another um, unnecessary delay or do you think the president would actually do the needful and send an executive bill? The implication of the, of the writing of the set of the president in the National Assembly is that they should they should go and export. And what I mean is that when they export, all what they give, that part, that goes to the president for another, which does not make any sense. And the time that we are trying to avoid, when we are trying to avoid the president to still occur. So, so, um, I think, I think for, for both of them, both that really sit down and look at the future of this on the uh, 2020. Okay. Immediately, uh, that time the, 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 the British are, I like as we said, sensitive. So, but if that is not taken with this letter of the National Assembly, the point is in that the, the president will new act will the new act that part of the president for another state. What that means that I let me to reschedule the timetable and we have to be careful about it 
so that I have to still have enough time to be able to meet up with uh, time in your industry. But can we afford to do all, or can we afford to do any reshuttling right now? We, we cannot afford to reschedule any of it. But if certainly of the election to think about good studies and be so on to the electoral process, so be it. All right, uh, just uh, before we let you go, now let's just uh, get your candid um, opinion concerning this particular um, amendment, amended law. So as it is right now, do you see better elections uh, that will be held um, this year and of course um, uh, for the national ones next year? I think I got you. I said, with this um, um, amended um, law that we have before us, do you see um, the nation having more credible uh, more sustainable um, elections uh, this year, and of course, with the national ones again next year. Yeah, of course. So, look at the electoral has been put electoral process. What are you looking at? Uh, electronic um, uh, we're, we're going to be talking about electronic transmission of results. Uh, transmission vote. of results. Mm. And uh, the use of the use of electronic votes has been entrenched in the new law. So, this will go a long way to reduce the influence of either voters or electoral office in the electoral office. And these are some of the things that Nigerians have been family. We don't also forget that for the next part that we are going this hard time for now does not mean that we can still not amend for that two years to come for us to have better property. All right. But this is a very good thing. It's taking care of a lot of things, a lot of flaws, a lot of issues that a lot of people are concerned about. And uh, I want to give the next assembly and more than also to the president for allowing this to be up at this particular moment. Do not forget that the second problem that is going to be so on the Syrian is very good to that. And this part of it, the fact that we have both assembly and the uh, have, have done well, but there's still room for a lot of people to improve our political strategy. All right, thank you so much, Honorable Kendi Odene. We do appreciate your time. Thank you very much. All right, uh, Messi, we've been looking at um, the you know, Electoral Act, amend the amended Electoral Act, and of course the need for you know, the president to do the right thing, because if he went ahead with um, his um, stance of um, writing um, the Senate, at the end of the day, there'll be a bit of a um, time factor, and uh, it will affect um, the scheduling of um, the election. But uh, for what time um, Odene has said, um, uh, the president needs to maybe send like um, an electoral, um, executive bill to you know, show up all of um, these um, time issues. Well, but if you also look at the content of the issue, the fact that you're asking that people should not be disenfranchised because they are political appointees, you can also take out the fact that um, the reason why this is is because you can't, these people are loyalists, there's no way, mm. and constantly we see democracy being undermined, and so it's important that if we have to take that off, then we also need to understand that we probably might need to yeah. withdraw the powers from the president or the governor. But that's the much that we can take at this point in time. Thank you so much for being part of the breakfast. We'll definitely return tomorrow. The time again is 7 o'clock up until 9. If you missed out on any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. On Plus TV Africa, and do subscribe to YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Boko. Many thanks for watching. And I'm Justin Akadanyu. Many thanks for being a part of the show. Stand by for the news at top of the hour.